tomorrow we have a little token of thanks from the family of God. And a few words just to tell you how much we appreciate you. We, the family of Bradenton Gospel Tabernacle, would like to honor and admire you this Mother's Day. We admire the life you have lived for the Lord. Your mother was a great example of his love. We admire your dedication to serve the Lord, has blessed you with songs and music that has lifted our spirits and soul in praise. We admire the strength, wisdom, compassion, and thoughtfulness, always there with words of encouragement. Thank you for keeping the light of his love shining. It has surely touched each of our lives. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you all very, very much. The other day I was talking with my daughter and I said, you know, the older I become, the more I appreciate my mother. And she said, I was thinking the same thing the other day. <laughs> and I thought, um, yes. I had a tremendous mother. She was one in a, a lifetime. She was a wonderful lady. She died on her 105th birthday. She, when she met Jesus, she never turned back and never looked back. She was in love with Jesus. And you know how you know that? She loved his people. She was always doing for the family of God and always had a place in her heart for them. And today, of course, I think we all reminisce about our, our, our natural mother. And I was telling Penny when my mom was at 95, she was visiting a niece of mine in St. Louis. I'm from a very large family, being the youngest of 14. And we had, I had Fuku nieces and nephews and a lot, a lot of family. And when my mother would visit us, and it, she would become ill in any way, which was very unusual. It's like, don't die at my house, you know. <laughs> we have to, don't, don't do that. So she was at my niece's and um, my mother never complained. She felt everybody should be happy. And if you weren't, she would try to do something to cheer you. When, um, when she was 80, I believe, uh, she sold her house. She, uh, we had a, I grew up in a two-story house with the full-size basement. And she lived alone. So the family felt uh, in our little hometown, they were building an apartment complex. And they wanted my mother to move into this one of the apartments. So they called me and they said, my brother calls me, called me Ping. Ping. Yes, you need to come home. Why? You need to come home and talk mom into selling this house and moving into one of those apartments. So I said, okay, I'll come home. And when I got there, she said, I know why you're here. <laughs> I said, I came to see you. No, you came to tell me to sell this house. No, I didn't. If you want to live here, you just tell them you want to live here and I'll stand behind me, whatever you want to do. You're my mother, and if you want to live here until you die, you may. If you want to move into an apartment, we'll move you. But you, it's your decision, not ours. She was a tremendous lady. When she was 95, she was visiting, she moved into this little apartment. She was visiting my niece in St. Louis. And uh, they had been to the grocery store, and my mom told her, my niece, Ruthie, before they left that she didn't feel well. But uh, as I said, she was not a complainer. They went to the store and Ruthie had this basket of groceries and she got to the checkout. And my mother said, Ruthie, I I'm sick. I need to go home. It's like the groceries stayed, they went home. And she tried to get my mother to go to the emergency room and my mother said, no, no, no. Tomorrow I'll go home to my doctor. So um, my niece and her husband my mother didn't know it, but they sat up all night with her because they were very concerned about her. She had a fever. And the next morning, they called her doctor, which was like 150 miles away, and said that she wanted to go there. The doctor said, you let me speak with her. He said, you go to the emergency room. You may not live to get here. Whoops, okay, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> so they did exploratory surgery on her, and the doctor came out and said to my siblings, 
Your mother is a 95-year-old lady with the body of a 65-year-old lady. That came from serving Jesus and always doing his will. And today, as I stand here, I feel the presence of my mother. And I'm sure that all of you do the same, that your mother has gone on. And we know that they're in a wonderful place. But we, the living, are here to praise the Lord and prepare ourselves. You know, in the, one of, of my favorite scriptures is in Revelation 19. It said, the bride has made herself ready. And that's what we do daily. Is And the way we do that is by helping each other. Because, you know, as I said, I'm from a very large family. And when I came here, I knew my husband. That was all. And now then, you're all our children. Yes. Aren't we blessed? Yes. Aren't we blessed? Yes. Some of you, a, few of, a few of you older than us, not many, and that you're our children still. My sister called me uh, the other day and she said, um, did I know that one of my nieces had passed away? And I said, no. And she was like um, 88, my niece, you know. That's when you come from a big family, you have all age. Actually, I was not supposed to be. I didn't know that until I was an adult. But I was one of those mistakes in life I'm not planning for, you know. <laughs> but the Lord is so good, isn't he? Amen. I love you all. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes.